Sitting in the heart of Central Texas farm country, just 30 miles from Austin, is the T. Don Hutto Residential Center. An innocent enough sounding place, but Hutto, originally built as a medium security prison by the Corrections Corporation of America, has been leased for almost $3 million a month by the Department of Homeland Security. The Hutto facility is now America's largest detention center for women and their children who are in this country illegally. Keeping families with small children locked up for months is why Hutto has been so controversial and why some in Texas are demanding it be shut down. The Hutto facility has spent the past several weeks trying to pretty up uh, this jail and make it look less like a prison. You can put lipstick on this pig and it's still a pig. The American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit last week on behalf of the children held behind the walls and razor wire. Lisa Graybill is the legal director of the ACLU of Texas. Our lawsuit alleges that the conditions of confinement at Hutto are inhumane and wholly inappropriate for children. We believe it is against the law and against American values to place young children in jail, to require them to wear prison uniforms, to deny them access to education, recreation, and toys, and to threaten them with separation from their parents if they misbehave, if they are too loud, if they cry too much. In other words, if they act like children in jail. Until recently, children and adults received only one hour of education and recreation daily. Under fire from the community, children are now in class for four hours, still below Texas guidelines. Critics say medical care is inconsistent, food lacks proper nutrition, and detainees often don't have timely access to legal counsel. ICE contends it is taking complaints seriously and improving conditions. The agency also believes it's doing what's best by keeping families together. Mustafa is three years old. He and his mother, Bajo, spent seven months in Hutto detention. She fled what she thought would be certain death in her home in Somalia. The journey took them across Africa, through Europe to Mexico, and finally on a raft across the Rio Grande. She turned herself in to authorities expecting to be released pending a deportation hearing. Instead, she and her son were shipped to Hutto. First, when I entered, they told me to put a uniform, take off this uniform, and my son, they gave him another uniform for kids. And then they took me to the houses, housing places where they, their family are. The room, just room, two beds, and toilet inside, the small beds, just as, and I feel like a prison, <laughs> because it was, look, it's, it's just prison. To get tough on illegal entry into this country, the Bush administration has recently changed the rules. For years, illegal immigrants caught in this country were released and given a court date for a deportation hearing. Less than 2% appeared. Instead, they just disappeared into the U.S. So the Immigration and Customs Enforcement Agency, now known as ICE, decided to send a message. Assistant Director Gary Mead. If you are here illegally, we're going to apprehend you. If we apprehend you, we will detain you in a humane and safe way, but we will detain you and we will remove you from the country. Now that people know uh, if they come in as a family group illegally, they will be detained, that's deterring people from, from attempting to come in. This administration is, is committed to uh, putting an end to illegal immigration. And it's committed to building more beds to house illegal aliens. The Department of Homeland Security has awarded KBR, a subsidiary of Halliburton Corporation, a $380 million contract to build enough facilities to confine more than 27,000 detainees by the end of 2007. Well, the, the town here is Raymondville, but I call it Prisonville. Jody Goodman is a Harlingen immigration attorney who is concerned about conditions at other detention facilities, including the windowless 2,000-bed tent city in Raymondville and the 1,800-bed facility in nearby Port Isabel. Her clients have complained about hunger, isolation, even women miscarrying due to poor health care. 
when you have to withstand detention at this place for a month or two, um, you'll pretty much do anything or say anything just so you can get out. And I've seen people with credible asylum claims that, you know, fled their home countries for whatever reason, but it doesn't matter to them because they feel like they're going to die in that place. I mean, I have had people tell me, me siento que voy a morir. I feel like I'm going to die here. As an alternative, Goodwin and others say the government could give taxpayers and immigrants a break by using electronic monitoring bracelets, costing just $12 a day instead of $90 a day for detention. Even so, prisons continue to be built to house thousands of illegals who come across the border every day. As long as there's pull factors to, from the United States to bring people in, give them jobs, and, and actually give them a better, a, a better life, they're, they're always going to be coming in.